At the 30-year benchmark at Mount St. Helens, perhaps one of the most salient points that we have recognized is that the landscape has a tremendous amount of heterogeneity. That is to say there's a great diversity of types of habitat across the landscape. Over the course of a couple of hundred yards, you can go in and out of many different types of habitat areas that are relatively barren to areas that are support lush uh, meadows of wildflowers and grasses to shrublands to areas that even have young forest today and that diversity leads to a great deal of habitat for a wide variety of organisms and so if we compare the overall species richness and the number of species for a whole suite of organisms at Mount St. Helens as compared to a a uh, closed forest, even an old growth forest, we find that there's tremendously high diversity values in these large, slowly regenerating landscapes. So the important take home message is that when we look at satellite imagery, we see that these large, slowly regenerating landscapes following intense forest disturbance are the rarest land condition type in all of the west side of the Cascade Mountains. Indeed, far rarer than old growth. Yet we put so much emphasis on old growth and really have given short shrift to these other very important habitats on the other end of the successional sequence. We need to give more um, thought and consideration to how we approach the post-management of large natural disturbances. Our natural tendency following catastrophic wildfire is to run in and tinker under the name of restoration. We salvage logs, we replant with trees, and what we end up with is a very uniform system. We preclude the occurrence of those important early uh, successional stages and end up with diminished biodiversity.